Hey guys, this is just sort of going to be a weird video. I had originally written the script a while ago, and it was going to be sort of a treat for missing a load of uploads. However, I wanted to get some other what ifs out first, and I ended up, you know, getting some other what ifs out. So I'm uploading this pretty fast after the Tale of the Earthlings, just because eh, it's sort of a treat for everyone, and everyone has been asking for it. So I thought I would, you know, concede and write the script. Last time we covered the likes of the Earthling story and how it had changed and where this had led everyone to years before they had ever originally supposed to have gone. Now let's get going with our story. Nothing is all Goku can see. Having no idea if this is the afterlife his grandpa Gohan had told him about or if somehow he had survived with the Saiyan opening his eyes realizing that the room he's in is familiar he scans the room and sees a radar on the side and a black haired woman on a chair fast asleep at the base of his, well, bed. With Goku confused he stands up and walks around where his eyes adjust to the light, with him walking along a hallway which also feels familiar once again, before reaching a room where he hears laughter and people talking. Holding onto the arm that is still pretty damaged, the Saiyan gets ready to fight. He rushes into the room and sees a sight he wasn't ready for. With him charging in, he sees people who look familiar. A blue haired woman, someone with long black hair and a lot of scars, and the likes of a short person with a bold head. That stops Goku in his place. With him seeing the connection, he spits out the words, Krillin. With him cracking half a smile, but stopping himself. He's had stuff like this happen before. It's probably another dream, another fake bit of hope in his life. This couldn't be Krillin, this couldn't be his friends, they're all on earth, whereas he is most likely dead or passed out after the battle with Frieza, about to be woke up by Raditz. Goku goes on to say, for a moment I thought I was home, but yet again I dreamed of the place I miss, the people I miss. But the longer I spend in space, the further away I feel from here, and the more it feels impossible to make it home. I'm sorry guys, I hope you live a good life. Having said this, he slumps onto the floor, almost in tears, waiting to be woken up. With the room currently staring at Goku, the short bald one walks over to his friend. Goku, you know where you are, right? Goku pulls his head out of his arms. Yeah, I'm on a freezer planet, probably currently dying or hardly holding on to life. With everyone confused before Krillin chuckles, you red capsule cop you idiot, you're on earth, not in a dream. With Goku hearing this he almost jolts up, with him looking around once again, scanning the room and realising that there is some small differences between how he's seeing things now and how his dreams normally go. With him seeing how the group had aged up, he can sense their energy. With him looking at Krillin and in excitement he asks the earthling to throw a punch. Krillin is confused and sort of against the idea of hurting his friend, but Goku insists. With Krillin conceding he throws a punch straight towards his friend. With Goku catching it, Goku begins to smile his head off, explaining how in his dreams, his dreams would end just before the first punch is thrown. Goku has been dreaming to have a fight with the earthlings for years and for the first time a punch has been made. And this is sort of the realisation point for Goku that he's home. And you guys are in front of me, is what he says. With him standing up and shouting out in excitement, with him going around to everyone in the room, happily saying hey to everyone, getting to meet all of them again. With them having a small bit of catch up, and eventually Goku goes around the whole room and meets up with Tien once again. Goku and Tien look at one another, with Goku going out to shake his hand. But Tien bows, saying how he's sorry. All he thought about the last five years was how he didn't do anything to save him from that evil Saiyan that took him away, and for that he is sorry. Goku sort of chuckles to this, saying, I never blamed you Tien, I knew you were there and the whole time I could sense you, but internally I was screaming for you to stay away from the guy in front of me. He was incredibly strong, and would have killed you, but nowadays I will not call Raditz an evil guy, in fact I would consider him a good guy. Helped keep me alive the last few years, and he was pretty much helping me defeat Freezer. 
And once we did that, we were going to come home. With Goku then thinking about Raditz, he takes a moment and senses every energy on Earth. Feeling how he can't sense Raditz's energy. With him looking around the room, almost as if he is searching the planet, Goku picks up on a high power level heading towards the group. It's high in standards of Earth, but out in space this is actually considered really low. With him then realising that there's two power levels there, one much lower, but still there. With Goku still scanning the planets, trying to pick up on a high power, trying to find Raditz, but he can't find him anywhere. Goku about to ask where Raditz is, he is cut off from another thing. A woman screaming at him at the top of her voice, with him turning around to see the black haired woman that was once at the, asleep at the foot of his bed, staring him down. With him looking at her and her staring at him, the girl shouts at him how could he allow himself to be taken when he promised to marry her. Goku blinks for a second and looks back at her before walking up to her and grabbing her by the shoulders, asking if she was Chi Chi. She's a bit flustered and blushes a bit and says of course she is. With Goku smiling saying how he remembered her during his time in space and he will keep his end of the deal but explains how he didn't really know what marriage was until his brother explained it to him a few years ago and Goku goes on to say how he would love to keep his end of the deal and he will continue this promise he made. Hearing this Chi Chi is happy but a bit annoyed that Goku didn't know what marriage was and this doesn't stop her from being happy and she latches herself onto Goku's arm. With Goku about to turn and ask about Raditz once again, the group is sopped by the sound of Roshi entering the room. Roshi and Goku share a bit of an emotional moment, after all Roshi is sort of a pseudo father figure for Goku, so it's good to see one another again and they catch up a small bit. However, the person who is with Roshi is a shock to Goku, and it actually takes Goku a minute of scanning his brain to figure out who this is. And eventually Goku realises that this is Upa, his friend. And the two do a bit more catching up with Goku trying to figure out why he's, you know, so much stronger now and what happened with everyone filling him in a small bit. But Upa then gives Goku a sensu bean. With Goku already knowing what one of these is, they don't need to explain it to him. And he eats one and feels a lot stronger afterwards. With him doing some small jabs into the air just to, you know, feel how he, his arm feels. With this done, a sort of small party breaks out, with Goku hearing what everyone went through to get him back to Earth. With him hearing how they wished him to Namek during the battle, but this is the point where he realises something, and shoots up abruptly. With everyone confused, Goku asks what happened to Raditz. With all of them saying how they don't know, they only wish for him to be brought to Namek. With Goku now remembering everything, his memory was fuzzy a little bit, now it's clear. He remembers the sight of the supernova slowly pushing in on him, and it was getting closer and closer, but then remembers his environment changing to a mass amount of green before waking up here on Earth. With him asking where the ship that brought him to this planet is, Bulma says how it's on Namek they use one of the wishes that Prunga grants to bring them all home. With Goku asking Bulma if she can build him a ship, Bulma's sort of shocked and kind of confused. She said she could, but it would take her four months, maybe. Thanks to the fact that she already sort of knows what she needs to do, thanks to the Namekian ship she used. But also, it's going to take her time to get everything together. And Goku asks her to do this for him. With Bulma unsure of what to do, she sort of stands up and sort of doesn't know what to do. And with this done, Goku walks out of the room and starts heading out of Capsule Corp, getting ready to leave the area and wants to head towards Mount Poundzu, where he is stopped by the likes of Tien and Krillin, who stand out in front of him, asking for him to explain what's going on. And finally, Goku explains his end of the story. Everything that happened with Raditz, the other Saiyans, what happened with the Galactic Patrol and the fight against the Freezer Force, and then hearing how they luckily saved him from a battle of life or death, which both Goku and Raditz were going through. However, unluckily for Raditz, he wasn't saved. But a new bit of luck does appear. Bulma, after hearing the name of Jacko brought up, asked Goku to describe Jacko for her. With Goku describing Jacko exactly what Bulma was expecting to hear, she explains how they're actually a friends, and she can call him if Goku wants to. Goku almost jumps over the room to ask Bulma to do this. And the woman makes the call with a very confused and startled Jacko answering the call. 
With him asking Bomber what she wants before saying how it isn't the best time. With Bomber not getting a chance to say anything, the likes of Goku jumps out in front of the camera. Jacko and Goku are both happy to see one another. After all, even in the short time they knew each other, they became pretty close friends. Goku asks what happened, with Jacko saying how they managed to escape thanks to him and Raditz, but they were being chased by some of Frieza's men and what looked to be King Cold's ship, which they presume had picked up Frieza. With Goku hearing this, he asks Jacko how long will it take him to get to Earth, and how long will it take the rest of the force to get here. With Jacko thinking for only a few minutes, he says probably a week at max, but they will be followed by free the Freezer Force and possibly Freezer and Cold. Goku says that's fine, just get here and be safe. With this done, Goku turns to the group saying how he needs to train. If Freezer's coming here, he is nowhere near strong enough to stop him. He hopes that maybe this week will give him enough power to hold him off or at least kill him in some way. But last time they fought, even himself and Raditz wasn't enough. With Goku beginning to leave the area with the sensu beans in hand, clearly having the plan to abuse the hell out of Zenkai's, the likes of Chi Chi, Tian and Krillin all stand out in front of him. The likes of Tian shouting out how he has brought a dangerous fight to the planet and goes on to say how this could kill everyone and this is a very risky move. With Goku saying how he has to get revenge for his brother, and a small note here is, I know Goku's psychology normally doesn't line up like this, but there's some things I want to run by. And I hear the drive to kill Freezer is running through Goku's brain a lot. After all, he had killed Goku's last remaining family. And there is another part of his brain which wants to save the people who he promised to protect. And the final part, and sort of the final decision in Goku's brain is that he's sort of excited to fight someone as strong as Freezer again. However, this is only a small amount of what's going through Goku's brain. He's mostly being run by the other two factors. But something else I want to bring up is this isn't our normal Goku. He's still very happy-go-lucky and much like his canon self. However, he has a lot more say in here, in small ways that he might not always show. Revenge is something he desperately wants right now, and maybe to embarrass Frieza a small bit. These are things that are going through Goku's brain, and he can't really help himself. Now, let's get back to the story. After Goku had said how he needs to get revenge for his brother, he starts to walk past the group, with Tien grabbing his shoulder, with Goku just saying how he has to defeat Freezer. If you knew what this monster had done to the universe, you'd understand. Krillin, who had trained pretty much the hardest, steps out saying to Goku, if he's training, he will join him. With Goku kind of shocked, with Krillin just sort of giving him a thumbs up, with Goku smiling, the likes of Chi Chi says how she will also help in this fight and this training. After this is said, the likes of Yomcha, Upa, and even Chaozu say that they will do the same. Whereas Tian is a bit shocked at how fast everyone joined him. Tian had sort of been the de facto leader for a few years. Even though Goku isn't really a leading type, his whole personality does encourage people to follow him. So here, it sort of works in his favour. Tien is still in shock at how fast everyone joined Goku, with them all explaining how it's clear that Goku needs help, so we should help him. With Goku having not felt this backed up in years, other than the likes of Raditz, he's just happy. He thanks all of them. With Tien annoyed, he looks at his friends and the person he worked to save for for years. He smiles and tells them he has an idea of where they can go train. With everyone confused, Tien tells them to follow him. They all bid Bulma and Roshi a goodbye. With the pair being a bit annoyed that Goku had left so early, but they also share a bit of a laugh, thinking how there is nothing more Goku than just disappearing after a few minutes of meeting up and eating food. With their pair just happy he's back. And they wish all of them the best of luck. After a short flight, the group can see Kami's lookout in the distance. With Tien landing, he begins to explain where they're training. He explains how there's a room on the lookout called the Room of Spirit and Time or the hyperbolic time chamber, and he would like them all to spend some time in there. After all, if you spend a day on the outside in there, it accounts for a whole year. With him going on to explain how Kami was thinking about letting them use this a few months before they went to King Kai, and then he goes on to explain how they were actually going to use this when they were training for the Tenkaichi Budokai a few years ago as well. However, all of them had grown so strong 
that they didn't actually need it thanks to the fact there was loads of training partners so they never went in but here it might be needed but we need to know how strong this freezer person is with everyone turning towards goku who says freezer is probably 20 or maybe more times stronger than himself with everyone wanting to get a feel for how strong goku is the saiyan walks out into the center of the lookout and lets out his true power with goku's power capping out at six mil Thanks to the Zenkai he got from the battle, everyone is shocked, as no one is even near Goku's power. Not even really in the same weight class as Goku right now. With the closest being Krillin and Tien, but even then there is a huge difference in power. With Goku making the likes of Kami come out to see what is happening, he is shocked to see the Saiyan who was kidnapped before this strong. He is happy to see Goku again, and introduces himself. And soon, the whole situation is explained to Kami. With Tien explaining how he wants to use the Rumor Spirit in time, Kami understanding and also sort of respecting how Tien runs things, if he see, thinks that Tien deems it necessary, they can use it. You see, currently Tien is Kami's pick for the next Guardian, and he believes this freezer will be a good test to see how Tien prepares for big upcoming threats. With him happy so far of how Tien is handling things. Of course he is worried about the Earth, however he trusts in Tien to do what's right and defend the planet. Tien doesn't also know the fact that Kami is sort of testing him to be Guardian, but for now, Kami is happy with what he's seeing. With Goku wanting to go in first, explaining how he's probably the best bet to win, the likes of Tien explains how Goku will have to wait to let other people use it first for people to catch up with him in power. So everyone will take one trip in the time chamber and then the strongest person will go in with Goku once. Goku asks why he can't go in alone, with Tien explaining if it's your first time in a time chamber, it can be mentally tasking. However, the Saiyan says it wouldn't be his first time in a time chamber. A place like this exists out in space, but instead of a year, it's only three days. With the Earthlings now understanding why there's such a massive amount of power difference, and not really understanding what a Zenkai is, they just assumed that's how strong Goku was during the fight with Frieza. With Tien saying how it's risky to go in alone, after all, it's a year instead of three days. Tien then starts splitting people into groups of two. Knowing who works well with one another, this is how he organises things. He decides that himself and Quillen will be going in first, followed by Yomcha and Upa, and finally Chiaotzu and Chi Chi. Then Goku gets to go in with whoever comes out the strongest. However, this doesn't sit well with one of our fighters, with the likes of Chi Chi saying how she will be going in with Goku regardless. With Tien a bit against the idea, as she is the arguably the weakest currently, he asks the woman why this is, and she says how she had had to wait all this time to bring back Goku, and now she won't get to see him for what will feel like a year, with her saying how if she's going in, she wants to go in with him. And everyone knows that Chi Chi's quite stubborn and probably won't back down, but also knows that she isn't anywhere near Goku's level. However, luckily for the group, Goku grabs her shoulder, which grabs her attention. He says how she can't come in with him. This does upset her, and Goku goes on to explain how he needs to go in last, but this means they can spend a few days with one another before the pair have to go in. This does lift her spirits a bit, and the pair head off to their own corner of the lookout. Tien thanks Goku in his head and realizes that the way to calm Chi Chi down is to just give her Goku and makes a mental note of this with the likes of Tien and Krillin heading into the time chamber with Krillin saying how he kind of wanted to go in with Goku as well which makes Tien laugh agreeing with him. Now once in the time chamber the two have a goal to get to Goku's level which is a bit of a long shot however they can try their best. Alongside this, they are going to be working hard to try and grow their Kaioken, get a better mastery over it. Which is something they had gotten during their training with King Kai, alongside another technique, obviously being the Spirit Bomb. And after a full day had passed, the pair leave the time chamber. Now I'm going to explain the starting power level before they went into the time chamber, and give a bit of an idea of how they got to that point, and then give their current power level after the time chamber. So Krillin went in with a power level of 30,000, thanks to the fact that he trained with King Kai for over a year, a lot longer than Goku did. And then the training with Kami just before had led him to be able to make it to Snake Way, across Snake Way faster, and he started at a stronger point than Goku. So he already had a lot of jumps ahead. So once leaving the time chamber, I believe he had a power level of probably 
750,000. But thanks to the fact he has the Kyo Ken times 20, he can push it up to 15 mil. Tien is pretty much in the same boat of terms of training and how he got to the strength he started at. However, he probably got to a power level of 34,000 after his training with King Kai. Now, with the hyperbolic time chamber training as well, he got to 850,000. And then with the Kyo Ken times 20, that goes to 17 mil. With them coming out this strong, Goku thinks that they are no match for Frieza, but of course he doesn't know about the Kyo Ken, with the next set going in being Yamcha and Upa, who hope to get half as strong as Tien and Krillin. With Goku still spending time with Chi Chi, who is currently loving spending time with the person she trained to save, Goku is trying to figure out if Chi Chi will possibly keep training afterwards. Not that he would care, but he's sort of interested to see if she would. Now, Upa and Yamcha have actually become quite close over the years, so the pair head into the training in pretty good terms, and they already know how one another works quite well, so they get some good results from this, and after a full day, the pair come out. Going into the time chamber, Yamcha started at a power level of 4,000, with him managing to push himself up to 200,000, thanks to the fact he spent all of his time training instead of trying to master any forms, which some people might consider pretty low, but keep in mind this is a year before the Saiyan, this is years before the Saiyan saga started, so Yamcha is actually massively ahead of where he would be in canon. Upa has started at the same point as Yamcha and got to the same power level as Yamcha, so I don't really need to cover too much here. With them coming out, Goku grows increasingly worried, but he hopes that the training he will go through will make him a lot stronger than Frieza. With this done, the likes of Chi Chi and Chaozi go in, with Chi Chi actually giving Goku a bit of a kiss before she goes in. And after a full day, they leave. This is just a fun little side note I thought of, but during this full year of training, these two probably had the best experience with food in the hyperbolic time chamber than everyone, so well done for that, guys. Now, once they leave, they come out with a power level of both being at the same point, they leave with a power level of 150,000. I didn't really know where to put these two at the starting point, so I'm going to say about, let's say 3,000 is where they started. With this done, Goku can sense that this training isn't going to be enough for them. He's going to have to go into this training being really intense and really have to abuse his Zenkais. Even then, Goku doesn't like this idea. He never really liked it, so he's a bit against the idea. And seeing Goku's worried, everyone else gets a bit worried. Keep in mind that none of them truly got go close to Goku's power level. However, the Saiyan says how every bit of power will help them. With the Saiyan looking to head into the time chamber, he asks who's coming with them. With the likes of Kami asking if Tien could enter the room, before announcing that if Tien will take the offer, he would like the human to start training to become the next Guardian of Earth after the battle against Frieza. Tien is shocked and asks if he can think it over. With Kami allowing this, the likes of Goku and Tien head into the time chamber. Where we see Goku and Tien push each other past their limits. Tien uses the Kaioken to keep up with Goku, and Goku keeps pushing himself to get past Tien's Kaioken. A lot of this time is also spent with Tien meditating while Goku does his own training, using the multiform technique or anything he can use that Tien has taught him to get some training in. And Tien spends most of his time meditating on the thought of becoming Earth's guardian. With him unsure of how to feel about this, after all, Tien doesn't feel truly worthy to become the guardian of Earth. He's not even the strongest person on the planet anymore. And this leads to him always looking like he's in a lot of turmoil. And this leads to Goku asking what's going through the fighter's head. Tien explains how he isn't sure if he's worthy of taking the title. After all, so far he hasn't ever really defended the Earth. But he's probably caused more problems for it. Goku goes on saying how, You know Tien, I'm unsure of how this fight with Frieza will go. What the future holds for the fate of this planet. But I do know one thing. You do care for this planet and its people. And yes, your years at the Crane School might have caused a few problems. But once you saw the error of your way, you changed it. And you tried to stop the Demon King, even though he was leagues ahead of you. And then you trained to save me. If you want my opinion, Tien, you're the best man for the job. With this said, Tien thanks Goku. With the Saiyan laughing a bit, saying how it's still weird hearing his name being actually Goku instead of people using Kakarot. And it explains how he was kind of getting used to it. The pair have a joke with Tien saying how he can start calling him that if he wants. And Goku denies that offer. With... The pair spending a whole year in the time chamber, they eventually leave, and there is a bit of a surprise waiting on the outside for Goku. 
When he comes out of the time chamber, the likes of Chi Chi is holding a turtle school gi for the Saiyan. Goku accepts the clothes as his current armor is pretty banged up, but the four are now done, and they decide that training anymore would probably just exhaust them mentally, so they all wait for the next four days to pass. The group do spend some time resting, and they also spend time coming up with plans and strategies to defeat Freezer. Think of it of a bit like how the Cell games went. Now, the group just wait around to feel the power of the Galactic Troll come in, and after four days had passed, much like Jacko had said, it had only taken them a week, Goku senses a few powers coming into Earth, and one of them is definitely Vegeta, with there only being one ship landing, and this ship is also landing way off in the wasteland, thanks to some coordinates that Bulma sent Jacko, to avoid freaking out civilians. With Goku sensing this, he flies off straight towards where the ship is landing, with him only being able to sense a lot of Freezer soldiers, and then only one familiar power level, with the likes of Jacko flying out of the window. With Goku panicking, he asks what happened. Jacko explains how he doesn't need to worry too much. They'd taken a few losses, yes, but he split up with the Galactic Patrol a while ago. He explained how he would take this ship solo to Earth to distract Freezer, so the others could escape when they rotated around the planet. Goku understands he soon feels a bit of relief, but then it soon spikes back up to fear. Freezer is entering the atmosphere, with him also being accompanied by another huge power. King Cold is here, and this was Goku's worst thought. He had felt King Cold's powers once, and it was incredible then and still is incredible now. Goku gulps a bit, and it's at this point the other fighters show up. With Goku explaining what he can sense to both Jacko and the fighters, they explain how they need to get this ship out of here first. With him telling the likes of Chi Chi and Chiaotzu to grab this massive ship and get it out of this area, saying how they need to be careful, it's full of criminals, and if they are released, it could go bad quite fast. Even though all of his friends are stronger than them, not everyone on Earth is, so it's the safest bet. With this done, Goku then turns towards his friends, explaining how there is two incredibly strong people here, and they are both very much out of their league currently. But thanks to that Kaioken thing, Tian and Krillin should be able to hold one of them off. He asks if they would be able to fight the bigger one, his name is Cold. With him saying how all of them should deal with him, and he will fight Freezer alone. With them also being able to sense the power of Freezer, with them knowing Goku is weaker, and also not knowing what his max power is, the only person who knows how strong Goku truly is after the hyperbolic time chamber is Tien. But after hearing Goku announce how he'll be fighting Freezer alone, they leave him to it, knowing that this will mean a lot to him. Freezer's ship lands, and the likes of King Cold and Freezer leave the ship. Freezer seeing Goku, he looks confused, asking how did you survive, monkey? I blew up the planet. I heard you and your brother scream bloody murder. Out. With Goku saying how he got saved by some friends, Freezer looks annoyed, but sees that Raditz isn't here, and laughs, saying two out of one isn't too bad, I guess. Your brother screams enough for the pair of you. With Goku hearing this, he rockets off towards Freezer. With the same moving a lot faster than Freezer was expecting, Goku lands one punch on the tyrant's face, sending Freezer flying backwards. King Cold Scouter picks up the Saiyan's power level, and it reads out 100 mil. Goku stares at Freezer. With King Cold going to help his son, he shoots a blast towards Goku. However, the likes of Tien uses his Kaioken times 20 to block the attack for Goku. Goku thanks Tien, and the Saiyan flies off towards Freezer. With King Cold looking at the Triclops, having detected his power skyrocket to up to 100 mil as well, before dropping back down to 6 mil. Now, we'll be covering both fights, but I'm going over with Goku and Freezer first. Now, over with Goku and Freezer, Freezer looks at the Saiyan and spits out some blood he managed to draw from his mouth. Before saying that the monkey had become a lot stronger, it seems, with Goku not saying much, he takes a fighting stance. With Freezer laughing, the two disappear out of sight before reappearing, having landing a blow on one another. Goku got hit harder thanks to Freezer being stronger and gets sent flying away, whereas Freezer only moves back a small bit. With it being clear that Freezer is still stronger and still has the edge in terms of power, Goku knows that he must play smart to win. He knows that he needs to win for Raditz. With Goku thinking this, his hair stands up on its edge for a few seconds before soon falling back down. With Goku then rushing back at Freezer, the Emperor gets ready to block the attack. However, once Goku gets close, 
He aims his arms towards the ground and shoots off a blast, bringing up a cloud of smoke. Freezer, remembering what happened last time he did this, jumps up out of the smoke, then sends a blast into the smoke, clearing it all out. However, once he does this, he is kicked into the earth from behind him, with Goku having used the opportunity to got, get behind Freezer. With this putting Freezer into the ground, Freezer then sends out a barrage of death beams. With him being surrounded by a lot of dust right now, he can't see, which leads to Freezer just shooting in every and which direction. Goku manages to dodge all of them, However, some stray beams fly off towards the group with King Cold. Of all of them desperately trying to dodge this attack, only one person is hit and it's Yamcha. He only gets hit in the arm, but this leads to the warrior being down an arm. With this flaring Goku's anger up a small bit, he goes in and hits Freezer once again, and the two begin to clash with one another, only appearing for a few seconds before disappearing. Now let's head back a small bit and join the fight with the humans versus King Cold. Well, we see the likes of Tien and Krillin standing out in front of the group. The likes of Yamcha and Upa say how they are no match for this guy, but they will try and land small hits from a distance. The group having this plan ready, the likes of Tien and Krillin use the Kaioken times 20 with one another, and leads to the pair actually being able to hold off King Cold quite well. And thanks to a bit of support they get from both Upa and Yamcha, they could almost be considered to be winning. However, the Kaioken is still very difficult to hold, so the likes of Tien and Krillin are having to drop out of the form every now and again, and when this happens, King Cold beats them up hard. Eventually, like I just said, Yamcha does get hit in the arm with a death beam, which makes things a bit harder. However, around this time, the likes of Chi Chi and Chao Chu show back up, and this makes the fight a bit more in the favour of the Z Fighters. Chao Chu will use his telekinetic abilities to slow down King Cold whenever Tien or Krillin goes in to go for a hit, and Chi Chi will join Yamcha and Upa in sending off massive amounts of Ki Blast towards the King. Now after a few minutes of both battles being in a bit of a stalemate, something finally breaks. The likes of Tian is tired and he knows his body can't handle much more of the Kaioken. He knows he needs to win now and does something he had only ever tried once in the hyperbolic time chamber. With his body flaring up in a bloody red, he shouts out Kaioken times 30. With this making him stronger than the king, he flies straight towards him, landing only two hits before the stress of the form collapses his body. With Tian's body having failed him, Cold looks at the motionless body of Tian. Tian is still alive but can't move, his muscle had spazzed out and can no longer do anything. With Cold laughing, he puts his foot on the Triclops' head and begins to squeeze down on it, sort of trying to see how much pressure it will take to break the skull of this guy. With Krillin seeing this, he flares up in anger, flying off towards King Cold, using his Kaioken to try and tackle him away, but once he gets close, King Cold smacks him away with his tail. With him beginning to crush Tien's head even more, all the Earthlings decide now is the time to step in. They all rush Cold, hoping that they could make him budge or just get off Tien, but not one of them land a single blow on him. While staying firmly in place, he dodges everything thrown at him, and if they do manage to land an attack, it does nothing to the King. Eventually, he gets bored of this and lands a few attacks on people. He hits Chi Chi once in the gut. He kicks Upa away using his free leg. And then he grabs Yomcha by the neck. And he begins to squeeze down on it as well. Seeing which will break first. The Triclops' skull or the bandit's neck. Goku, who is currently locked into a fight with Freezer, begins to see this. And he desperately tries to break away from Freezer. But this leads to Freezer landing a good blow on Goku. With this sending the Saiyan skidding backwards, clutching onto his gut where he was hit. With the sound of Tien's screams filling the air, they are suddenly cut off with a crunch. Everyone looks over towards King Cold, seeing Tien motionless. And the power of Yomcha is slowly dropping. And then it's done. With King Cold throwing both of the bodies he had collected to the side, everyone watches on in horror. He just killed their sh one of their strongest warriors, and Yomcha without having to try. The first person to act is Krillin, who enraged uses a Kaioken times 25, his max Kaioken output right now, and throws a Destructo Dish straight towards the king. With this not doing much, it only really cuts off the king's tail thanks to the fact he dodged it, but everyone is now in a bit of a panic, but one person isn't. One person is fuming in rage. One person is thinking of everything these two have ever done, thinking how they've killed his race, killed his brother, 
and the other one enslaved his race and now killed two of his friends. His energy spikes upwards massively and his power skyrockets higher than ever before. With a scream that shakes everything around him, Goku has achieved the Super Saiyan form. With everyone who can sense power shocked at this and they just sort of watched in amazed fear. Who gives Frieza a death stare which almost scares the Emperor. However, Frieza just sort of laughs and puts his arm up to show and shoot a death beam towards Goku. However, before he even puts his arm fully up, Goku is right in front of Frieza, crushing down on the hands that Frieza is about to use before lightly punching him in the gut. But this light punch was enough to send Frieza flung for miles. With Goku then turning towards King Cold, he disappears and reappears, holding Yamcha and Tien's body. With him then placing the pair's bodies over with the surviving Z Fighters before saying that Yamcha is only just alive, get him a sense of being. With them looking to see Yamcha just a little bit twitching, they can hear a slight bit of breathing. He's only just managed to cling to life, with Chi Chi panically feeding the fighter a sensu beam. He sits up, clutching at his own throat, and coughs up a bit of blood before thanking them. With everyone looking over to Tien to just see if he's alive, he is truly dead, and Goku tells everyone to leave the area. With Frieza having managed to come back from the hit he had just taken, he demands to know what happens. Goku puts his attention towards Frieza and laughs. I became the thing you feared most, Frieza. With Frieza beginning to shake his head and a bit of panic comes through him, Goku looks him dead in the eyes and announces what he had become. He screams out how he is the Super Saiyan. With this said, both King Cold and Frieza rush Goku. However, the Saiyan blocks both attacks with ease. He then throws a punch at Frieza, announcing how that was for his father before chasing off after Frieza and hammering him straight into the ground. He announces how that was for his mother. King Cold, seeing his son being beaten so badly, rushes over to try and stop Goku. However, before even getting anywhere near Goku, the Saiyan stops him with an elbow into the gut, saying how that was for his race, before spinning around and using a full power punch straight into King Cold's face, screaming out how this is for Tien. With this full power attack taking King Cold's head clean off. Frieza, having seen the likes of his father killed so easily and his head removed without any effort, he begins to panic and flies into the air. He jumps up to his full power form and tries to destroy the planet with a death ball. However, once it gets close to the earth, close enough to the planet where it could almost hit, Goku puts one arm out and catches it. Frieza is terrified before Goku just shakes his hand and the attack disappears. With Frieza getting ready to try and do something, try and figure out something, Goku charges up a double Sunday, shouting out how this is for his brother, and then throws the attack straight towards Frieza, completely destroying the tyrant and saving the day. And this is where I'm leaving this part. It's actually not as long as I thought it was going to be, the script came out a bit shorter, and I hope everyone likes it. And I hope it doesn't feel like Goku is too strong by the end of this. I just felt like this was right for Goku right now. After all, he was miles ahead of his cannon's counterpart anyway. The level of power has jumped massively and it will come back to bite them in the arse at some point. I'm sure everyone knows what I'm talking about. I do have a question though. and It's going to be a bit strange, but... It's nothing even really major. Would people like Goku to keep using the Saiyan armor he had been using for years? Or would they like to see him using a hybrid of both his Turtle School gear and his Saiyan armor? Of course this means I would have to get a commission which could possibly slow down the video time. But if people would want it I could always get it done for them. Um, however, keep in mind I would have it would probably take time because I'd need the money for the commission and then I would need to, you know get the commission done and wait for it blah 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 but yeah I just thought I would ask because I don't know I, I kind of like the idea of him keeping his Saiyan armor but it's also easier for me to use um, normal Goku renders as they're abundant Saiyan armor Goku not something so much abundant but anyway yeah I don't really know what else to say I'm sure people will be looking forward to the next part and the next part is going to just sort of be sort of my little filler arc between this and whatever the next saga 
which is a few years away, so it's going to be a pretty big time skip, hence why I'm doing a little bit of a filler arc for it. But I hope everyone enjoyed this bit. I really enjoyed the battle. I hope people don't think Goku's too broken right now. And yeah, uh, I hope everyone enjoyed. <laughs> Have a great day or a good night, and hopefully I'll see you next time.